We all know that we need to use compression in a mix. Why? To bridge the gap between the loud and quiet parts of our track so that way the end listener can hear them more clearly and so that they can cut on smaller listening devices. Now each compressor affects a signal in a unique way and in the process it imparts its own sonic characteristics onto a sound. So that's why you might hear me saying things like this sounds transparent or this is gonna add some color or saturation. These are all different characteristics based on analog hardware and the electronics that are housed within these pieces of outboard gear. Now, truthfully, a lot of this is beyond my understanding and I'm sure it's beyond yours as well. For that reason, in this video, I'm gonna focus on four compression types that you should be using in your mixes, but I'm not gonna go into the science or electronics based thinking here. I'm really gonna just talk about what you should be using how you should be using it and why you should be using it, at least how you should be thinking about it. And while I may not go so deep on explaining how these things exactly work from that electronics perspective, I will plug in a couple of links in the description below. So if you wanna learn more about that stuff, you can watch or read whatever I leave there. Let's talk about the first type of analog compression you should be implementing into your mixes. Voltage controlled amplifier or VCA for short. When I say this, you should be thinking about plugins like the SSL bus comp, the API 2500, and emulations that follow that. There's plenty of them out there and they're popular for a good reason. They offer the most granular level of control of any of these analog compressors that I'm going to mention. You're gonna be able to affect things like the attack, the release, the threshold, the makeup gain, the ratio, all types of parameters that are not always so commonly found on these other compressors that I've included in this video. So let's work through an example of VCA compression. I've got Cytomics the glue here, this is a very popular popular SSL emulation with all the parameters that you'll find on most. And I've applied this to my acapella master. So this is actually where all of my vocal tracks go and not only vocal tracks, but also the vocal effects, reverbs, delays, etc. And I'm using plenty of that on this track. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to work from scratch because this is the default setup here. And I'm just going to quickly set a two to one ratio, a slow attack, a faster release, and I'm going to dial my threshold in. And we're going to specifically pay attention to this section because it's basically two artists going back and forth, as well as the ad libs, as well as some delays and other effects underneath. And we're ultimately using this to bridge the gap in volume between all of these different moments and ultimately glue them together, true to this plugin's name. So let's do that. I get the money in the lab, I get the money in the lab, and I go bring it back, hey, hey, hey. I get the money in the lab, I get the money in the lab, and I go bring it back, hey, hey. I get, I get the money in the lab, I get the money in the lab, and I go bring it back, hey, hey. Hey, I get the money in the lab again. I get the money in the lab again. And I go bring it back again. I get now, this is obviously one of my preferred uses. I like to use it on a group, like I am in this case, or a drum group, or even on a master channel where I'm affecting all tracks. I find that VCA compression is really great at that. However, you definitely can use it on individual tracks if you like, so definitely try it out. Next, we have the field effect transistor, or FET for short. You've definitely heard this if you've come across an 1176. This is a very popular compression compressor that a lot of people like to use. But the thing is, this is a very distinctive sound. You're gonna get a very specific sound out of this compressor, and that's usually because of its exceedingly fast attack time that will process a sound in a specific way and impart its character. Now, I find that this is not that transparent. You're obviously gonna be coloring a sound, and typically when you reach for this, it's because you want the specific effect that it imparts on whatever you're applying it to. That being said, you can get really cool tones out of this, especially when applying it to an individual individual track like a vocal or a bass or a keyboard. However, you may not want to use this on a group that's definitely going to be better suited to something like a VCA compressor. I've got the pinnacle of FET compression here being the 1176. This is UAD's emulation of it and just take stock of the parameters. Notice how there is not any threshold functionality. There's no threshold here. Instead, you're balancing the input and the output of a signal alongside the attack release and ratio. You can also display something different on the meter, but I'm leaving it on GR, which is gain reduction. Now, one other note with the FET compressors that's interesting, at least the 1176, is that the attack and release work in the opposite way that they normally do. What I mean by that is, you see this attack setting all the way to the left. This would usually be the fastest setting. However, on the 1176, this is actually the slowest and the fastest would be over here to the right. And the same applies for the release. And again, I find this just to be opposite of what a lot of compressors offer in terms of the way that their buttons are laid out and how they work. That being said, I'm applying this directly to an individual individual vocal track, 
This is the verse of the song. So let's actually dial this in and see what kind of compression we can get out of it. And notice the tone shaping capabilities as well as I apply this. I get the money in the lab, white land, white, land, white, man. white man. I take the money from the white hand. I need the money in the white sand. Real, 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 real cards on deck out there with you. When I see, I see the big picture. Real, real hill figure. I get the money in the lab, white land, white, land. white man. White I take the money from the white hand. I need the money in the white sand. Real, 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 real cards on deck out there with you. When I see, I see the big picture. Real, real hill figure. So I left this vocal and solo on purpose so you could really hear the difference. It's definitely not as drastic as you may think, but it's significantly different. You're definitely getting some coloring, some saturation, just a whole different aesthetic from this sound, from this compressor. So definitely take note of how this is a character compressor that'll give you some more of that edge or that grittiness that you might want. Make your track definitely more forward in the process, which is good, but you might impart some characteristics that you don't necessarily want. So if you want something more transparent, don't really use a FET compressor, use something else but these work really well on individual tracks that you're not afraid to affect aggressively. Third on the list, we have optical compression or opto for short. Now, some examples of this type of compressor is an LA two-way. This is a very popular one and for good reason. It's a very transparent sounding compressor. However, it's very limited in its tweakability. Traditionally, these compressors only have two parameters, a gain reduction and a gain. So you're gonna get the reduction, but everything is gonna be preset. You're gonna have a preset attack, a preset release, and traditionally, both of them are slower. They're slower attack times and slower release times, which is why it sounds a little bit more transparent as opposed to the FET compressor that we just talked about, which is gonna be very noticeable due to the fast reaction time that it imparts onto a sound. You wanna use this type of compressor on things like vocals. That's where it really shines. However, you can definitely get away with using it on anything that you wanna affect more transparently. I definitely like to use it on more high-end sounds, pianos, synths, leads, things like that. The one caveat though is that it's not great at processing transient dense material. So things like drums, you don't really wanna use it on that because you're not gonna be able to manipulate the attack and release, and therefore you might really suck the light out of your drum tracks or other tracks that have transients if you're not careful. I've got an LA-2A emulation here. This is the Wave CLA-2A, one of my favorites. And as you could tell, very limited parameters here, right? You just got a gain and a peak reduction. You definitely have access to a few things that are not typically available on all plugins, but we're really just gonna play with the gain and peak reduction. And I'm applying this directly to my main vocal track here on the hook of this song. We're just gonna look to get about one to two dB of gain reduction, smooth the peaks out a little bit, and ultimately achieve Achieve that smooth compression sound that we're after using this plugin. So let's do that. I get the money in a lot, big I get the money in a lot, big And I go bring it back, eh? Hey, hey. I get the money in a lot, big I get the money in a lot, big And I go bring it back, eh? I get the money in a lot, big I get the money in a lot, big And I go bring it back, eh? Hey, hey. I get the money in a lot, big I get the money in a lot, big And I go bring it back, eh? So this is definitely making the vocal sound more forward. It's evening out the peaks and ultimately smoothing things over to the point where we can easily hear it. It sounds good and I'm ultimately getting what I want to get out of it. So that's why I love to use this on individual tracks like vocals as you see me doing here. Now, the final type of analog compressor that I want to talk about in today's video is tube compression. This is otherwise known as delta mu compression, and Manly actually trademarked the term variable mu compression as well. Now, the latter is a great example of this type of compression. However, you can also think of other compressors such as the Fairchild. That's another popular one that you've probably encountered in your experience as well. Now, the thing about these compressors is they impart a smooth and warm sound. A lot of people describe this as smooth, warm, thick, creamy. These are different terms that a lot of people use to describe the sound they get out of using these compressors. And for good reason, they can really warm up and thicken a sound, especially when applied to an individual track like a vocal or a bass. Tube compression is also great at gluing together buses because it's going to handle transients in a more musical way, unlike its more corrective brothers, FET and VCA compression. Whereas these tube compressors will be a lot more smooth sounding and give you a more musical result. If I'm being honest, I'm not really the biggest Fairchild fan, so here I am using the Manly Stereo Variable Mu Limiter Compressor, the one from UAD. So let's actually apply this directly to the master channel here. So now we're affecting both the vocals and the overall instrumental on this track. I bypassed all my other plugins that are on the master at this time. I'm gonna set my attack to be fairly slow. I'll leave my recovery to the fast setting. 
or at least the second fastest in this case. I'm gonna leave my output at zero for now and everything else just where it is, but I am going to just dial my threshold in and look for some gain reduction here, about one to two dB, let's say, just to get a smooth, nice sound, even out the peaks between the vocals and the instrumental, just glue it all together, and then I'll add some output if I feel like I need to to make up for what I'm losing. So let's do this. I need the money in the way saying, yeah. real, 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 real cards on deck, I'll deal with you. Yeah. When I see, I see the big picture, real, real big, yeah. I got the Tommy on me, I got a couple of Tommy chasing me down like one of them zombies. Yeah. I don't know if I'll fall for a tech, cause she naughty. Uh. Cut up on me, yeah. her nose on me, yeah. froze on me. Ooh. Anything oh got flows on me. Ooh. And I see friends of the foes, homie. Ooh. When it come to the chips, I need deal with the pickle. Yeah. She got that in the jiggle. Yeah. She make it clap in the middle. Yeah. She wanna talk to me reckless. I like dinner and breakfast. Yeah. And she be all on my Ooh. and make it fit like it's Tetris. Yeah. I get the money in a lot big I get the money in a lot big And I go bring it back, eh? Hey, hey, hey. I get the money in a lot big I get the money in a lot big And I go bring it back, eh? Hey, hey. I get the money in a lot big I get the money in a lot big day, uh, and I go bring it back every day. Hey, hey. I get the money in a lot big day. Uh, I get the money in a lot big day, uh, and I go bring it back every uh, day. Definitely what I described. Definitely warm, definitely smooth, definitely feels fuller. I mean, you can hear that the kick is mixed really loud in this track and it's still cutting through very aggressively, but at the same time, it's the vocals that I'm noticing the biggest change on. So you can see here how this is a great tool to use on groups, on masters. But again, you can even apply this to individual tracks if you want to add a little bit more warmth and presence to it using the Manly or even a Fairchild or any type of tube compressor that fits the bill. Now we're just scratching the surface in terms of compression and how to use it in your mixes. And if you want to learn more, if you want to get better at using compression in your mixes, check out this playlist that I'm going to leave up above right now. It's all of my best compression videos. I'm sure you're going to get a lot of value out of it, especially if you're not as familiar with this topic. That being said, I appreciate you guys for watching. If you got value out of this video, tap that like button until it turns blue. And if you're new here and you haven't subscribed, what you waiting on? Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell as well. So you get notified every time I drop a new video and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right. Peace. Five. Five.